Hey there, it's Vashti Sarah. Welcome back to Post Blog. If you have not subscribed, liked, followed, shared, all the cool buttons, go ahead and click them right now. Post Blog is essentially a parody to blogs that I've written in the past. So if you're new to the Post Blog podcast, you'll be hearing about things that I've written on my website on VashtiSarah.com. If you like to read, go ahead and go to that website, look at the past blogs that I've written. If you're more of a podcast person, which essentially that's why you're listening to this right now, then keep listening and keep tuning in for all podcasts that will be coming in the future about blogs that I've written. I like to be right. Matter of fact, I love to be right. But often I've found that I'm more wrong that I am right. Being married, that's amplified a thousand percent more because Vashti, the type A Vashti that I am, I like things done a certain way and there's no rhyme or reason to it, but I know that I'm right in my way. Granted, I've been married for a month and I've realized how wrong I've been in my attitude towards rightness. Oftentimes my husband will ask me, Vashti, I don't mind doing things the way you want it to be done, but why does it have to be done that way? Why are there not other ways that these things could be done? I don't have an answer for him. All I simply say is because it's always done that way. And then I try to prove my rightness. Now, this episode is not going to be about how to be right versus wrong in marriage because I do not know it all. One month of marriage does not make me an expert. But I do want to hammer on the attitude of rightness, because if it's not addressed before marriage, if it's not addressed early on in our pre-adolescent years, then we'll carry this attitude moving forward. And I've noticed that in myself and in other people my age, where we haven't addressed certain character issues early on, that those character issues that needed help and needed work seep through and trickled into our relationships. It trickles into family conversations. It trickles into our work environment. And if you're in a dating relationship that the goal is to be married someday, then it will seep into your marriage. So what's the attitude of rightness? Essentially, it's wanting to be right about everything. And if someone thinks differently than we do, we either condemn them or we shun them. We are right. And we don't have to have a reason why we're right. We just know we're right. And then everybody else who thinks differently than we are, they're wrong and they're wrong for thinking that they're right. A lot of the times that attitude of rightness turns into violence and that violence may not be physical. While we do see that today, a lot of the crimes we see done is because we want revenge because of our rightness. We want justice because of our rightness. But today, social media is a platform of violence. We display violence through the language that we use and through our narrative. We want to prove a point and ultimately it's our point that we want to prove. And that point is, look, I don't care what you got to say. I'm right. You're wrong. That's it. There's nothing more to it. The issue is, and while the whole attitude of rightness might boil down to several character traits that needs to be addressed. One of them that I believe is a huge factor as to why we feel like we're so right is because we've lost a key part of communication and that is listen. We don't listen. Today, when we're talking to someone else, when we're in a conversation, we're immediately coming up with a response. We're immediately coming up with our rightness that we completely dismiss what that person has to say. So whatever is coming out of their mouth completely goes to the floor. It disappears in midair and we don't hear their hearts. So listening, listening is completely out of the question. We want to be heard. And in order to be heard, we drown those who are speaking with what we have to say. We drown them with our opinions, with our perspective, with our so-called facts and statistics that we don't hear the heart of people. General George Marshall once said, the formula for handling people is first, listen to the other person's story. Two, listen to the other person's full story. And three, listen to the other person's full story 
first. What he's hammering here is that listening is key. In order to handle people, in order to understand people and understand their hearts, we have to listen. A lot of times people are trying to communicate their hurt, their pain, their agony, their anguish through words that have been jumbled up. And we don't hear anything other than maybe one or two words. And then we combat that. We combat that with remarks. We combat that with our opinions. We combat that by shutting them down completely. We don't want solution. At least that's what it appears to me. Don't get me wrong. Some of you might genuinely want a solution. Some of you genuinely want answers and to fix things. But I've noticed that majority of this generation, and I will include myself in this, we don't hate injustice. We don't hate it because if we hated it enough, we would have moved past the whole idea of wanting to be shared, retweeted and quoted. That's what we thrive on. Whenever something happens in this world, whether it be something good or bad, we thrive on the idea of being shared, retweeted, and quoted. We shift our rightness into be liked. We've lost the meaning of compassion and responsibility. Responsibility today doesn't look like what it did in the past. Taking matters into our own hands and fighting for justice, fighting for answers, fighting for a solution. Responsibility today is sharing a story, sharing a post, and sharing a tweet. And our job is done. We've done it. We did our due diligence by sharing, retweeting, and liking. We don't listen. We don't listen at all. We use our screens. We use our phones to emphasize our rightness. And then we create circles. We create circles of like-minded people and people who look just like us, act just like us. We say we want diversity. We say we want unity. We say we want certain things, but we then end up somehow in a group of people that look just like us, dress like us, talk like us. And we emphasize and scream, we want justice, yet hide behind a screen and use words of violence in hopes that that will bring justice. We may even use physical violence in hopes that that will bring justice. We did our part by liking, sharing, retweeting, and quoting because we're right and everyone else is wrong. But let me tell you something, especially as believers, if you want justice, if you want change, if you want a shifting in this generation, what we need is to remove that attitude of rightness, that rightness that creates cliques, that rightness that does not listen to other people, that rightness of shutting down others through words, through physical violence. We need to remove that attitude of rightness. And what does that attitude of rightness stem from? It stems from pride. Prideful to admit when we are wrong and prideful to give up our right to speak and be heard so that someone else can be heard. This generation, especially believers of the Christian faith, have become prideful to admit that our narrative is simply a means to justify a choice rather than truth and facts. And this, I'm not trying to pinpoint something specific because I know there's a lot of things going on in this world. Right now in the media, we're hearing a lot about Black Lives Matter. We're hearing a lot about LGBTQ. We're hearing a lot about abortion. We're hearing a lot about immigration. There's a lot of things amplified in the news right now. And these are real issues. I have my personal take on each of these. But what I want to emphasize here is that Christians and non-Christians, our narrative is not a means for justice, is not a means for change and solution. Rather, our narrative, what we're pushing, what we're reposting, what we're tweeting is simply to justify a choice rather than truth and facts. By all means, we will push it and we encourage it because I've done it myself. No matter how hurtful and painful our actions are, how hurtful and painful our words are, no matter how degrading and wrong the truth we are convincing others to believe because we need people to believe that we're right and they're wrong. Pride 
will always be the folly of man. I want to wrap up this episode by leaving you with what James, the writer of the book of James in the New Testament, writes. He says, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive others. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. I talked about the attitude of rightness. I talked about pride. James addresses this by saying we need to tame our tongue. We need to choose humility. And humility today, right now, is humbling our thumbs because we use that a lot on our phones and humbling our tongue because what we speak and what we say to people are oftentimes the evidence that we have the attitude of rightness. Here's the thing. If you didn't know this, let me tell you, listening brings understanding. If you don't listen, there won't ever be understanding among you and who you're communicating with. Speaking produces clarity and doing allows for change. So for everyone that wants change in this world, whether it be something minute or something huge as bringing awareness to a specific issue, you first need to listen, then speak, and then do. You can't speak and do without listening. Listen first, listen again, and then listen again and again and again. And I will say this, this specifically is targeted to those who follow the Christian faith. If Christianity to you is pushing only what supports your narrative and dismissing other principles in the Christian faith, then you have Christianity wrong. Christianity should not be selective. We should not pick and choose what sins we want to emphasize and push and say, these are evil, these are wrong, and then dismiss others and pretend as if they don't even exist. True Christianity is authentic and consistent. If you're like me and you struggle with rightness, I want to encourage you to listen, 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 then speak, and then do. Hear me out. You might be completely right in what you believe, in what you're pushing, in the narrative that you're trying to make aware of. But your rightness should never remove you from being able to listen and show mercy. I will say this again. Listening brings understanding. Speaking produces clarity and doing allows for change. We need to quit mindlessly talking. We need to quit ignoring people. We need to quit dismissing others and hear their hearts. Bottom line is, if you call yourself a Christian, if you follow Christ, the heart of God is to love people. And in listening, that is a form of love. Now, if you don't follow the Christian faith, this is still a character trait that is good to practice. It's good to listen. It's good to understand. It's good to hear someone else's heart because you'll find a lot of times what we believe and why we believe what we believe is because of what we've been marketed to believe. Our frame of reference has a lot to do with the marketing done from childhood to where we are today, but only if only we listened, maybe just maybe we'll have a perspective change. Maybe just maybe our vantage point will shift just a little bit that we'll be able to be open minded and extend compassion and mercy. That might not change how you think about certain issues, but it will change your heart to be able to extend love. To those who think differently than you do, look differently than you do, choose to live differently than you do. Change the attitude of rightness by taming the tongue and taming your thumbs. That's it for today's episode on I'm Right, You're Wrong. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like button, follow button, all the buttons to stay connected with the post blog podcast. Join me next week, same time, same place. Love y'all, but remember, God loves you most.